Ground beef is often the star of cookouts with friends and family. However, there are a lot of meat myths floating around out there, and if you don't know the difference between fact and fiction, we can guarantee you're gonna have a bad time. Keep watching to make sure you're not guilty of committing any of these ground beef gaffes. Perhaps one of the most common myths out there is the idea that the color of your ground beef determines how fresh it is. This sounds reasonable. After all, would you ever consider buying a piece of meat that looked gray or greenish? Probably not. And at one time, color may have been a smart way to determine whether you were getting fresh ground beef. Now though, that's just not the case. Why? Because according to the American Meat Institute, carbon monoxide is added to packages of beef you see in stores. This addition is not technically classed as a color additive, but it does change the color of the beef making it look redder and less aged. While this may not be a huge problem, it could lead you to believe that the ground beef you're buying is actually a lot fresher than it is. If you truly want to gauge the freshness of the meat you're buying, you're better off paying attention to the smell and the texture. Make sure it's not slimy or too soft, and if it smells bad, it probably is. When a lot of people hear the words ground beef, they automatically think of Hamburgers! The cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. Of course, this is a common use for ground beef, but that doesn't mean that it's all the meat is good for. In fact, there are countless recipes you can make in which you can use ground beef. And no, we're not just talking about Hamburger Helper. Meatloaf is a classic example of a recipe that calls for ground beef, if you like it, that is. Meatloaf, meatloaf, double beatloaf. I hate meatloaf. The options for ground beef recipes really are endless. Make chili, meatballs, or ragu. Or simply use it as a replacement for the meats in stir-fry and other dishes where meat isn't necessarily the star of the show. Because of its versatility, ground beef can work well in tons of recipes you may never think of. So don't feel limited by the burger or bust mindset. Expand your horizons and find a new recipe when you need to use up that ground beef in your fridge. Ground beef is one of those meats that's great to cook for a big group of people. It's generally not too expensive, and it can be used to bulk up recipes that otherwise wouldn't be too filling. Because it lends itself to large batch cooking so well, many people believe the myth that they can fill a pan to capacity with ground beef and it won't have any problems cooking. You're not going to want to crowd your pan with ground beef. In fact, you shouldn't cook more than about one pound of ground meat in a pan at a time. If you do have to cook more than that, it's a good idea to cook it in batches. Remember to allow the pan to heat up again when you add the second batch. The reason you'll want to avoid overcrowding the pan is that you don't want the ground beef to steam instead of browning. When there's too much meat in the pan, extra moisture gets trapped there, and you won't be able to develop that lovely brown crust you're looking for in most recipes. Most of the time when you're at the grocery store, you probably want to get in and get out as fast as possible. Sure, grocery shopping can be fun, but when you're at the tail end of a long day, the last thing you want to do is spend any additional time by the meat cases. But when it comes to ground beef, a little extra effort can go a long way. Cookbook author Meathead Goldwyn explains to Epicurious that buying ground beef that's already been pre-ground is definitely not the way to go. He elaborated by telling the outlet this, If you just pick up a package of something labeled ground meat, you're getting the lowest common denominator. But don't worry, you're not going to have to go visit a butcher just to get the high-quality meat you're looking for. You can get top-notch stuff at your grocery store butcher's counter if you just know what to ask for. Pick a cut of meat that has the right amount of fat for whatever you're cooking and ask your butcher to grind it on the spot. Depending on the cut of meat you opt for, this could be slightly more expensive than the packaged stuff. However, it's going to taste way better than that pre-ground meat ever could. Are you the kind of person that believes the fat percentage of your ground beef is irrelevant or that you'll always want to go with the leanest beef you can find? If so, you might be a LOSER! YOU'RE A LOSER! Okay, maybe you're not a loser, but you're certainly mistaken. Both of these beliefs are untrue, and while they may not cause you any major issues, it will mean that your ground beef probably isn't as good as it could be. The Kitchen explains that different fat percentages work better for different dishes. For example, if you're cooking burgers, you'll want to look for 80% lean, 20% fat ground beef. This is because you're going to want some fat for a juicy burger, but you don't want to overdo it. On the other hand, if you're making meatloaf, you're going to want even fattier ground beef. We recommend that you go for 70% lean, 30% fat ground beef if meatloaf is on the menu. This is because meatloaf cooks for a long time, so it's likely going to lose a lot of its moisture before you take it out of the oven. But what if you're mixing pork and beef for meatballs or ragu? In that case, you can choose the really lean stuff. Since you'll get so much more fat from the pork, it's okay if you go with less fatty ground beef. Therefore, 90% lean, 10% fat ground beef should work well in this instance. 
This is a myth that's not limited to ground beef, but most home cooks probably don't pay attention to this issue quite as much as they might if they were cooking a steak. You're not going to want to add your ground beef to a cold pan, according to Cooking Light. First, you should bring the pan up to temperature, then add in your oil and make sure that comes up to heat next. Finally, you can put your meat in the pan. Yes, waiting for these steps does take some extra time, but it's all worth it in the end. These days, more and more people are going on paleo or keto diets, limiting their intake of carbs and piling on meat, meat, and more meat. Whew. Oh. Oh, here come the meat sweats. There's a myth going around that the more meat and the more protein in your diet, the better, regardless of where it comes from. Hence, many people now believe lean ground beef can be a healthy option, especially if you're on a low-carb diet. We hate to break it to you, but you're… Wrong, sir. Wrong. According to Tufts University, eating red meat isn't particularly good for your health. While a moderate amount of red meat probably isn't too terrible for you, it's certainly not particularly healthy. And if you eat too much of it, you could be putting yourself at risk of certain health problems. Too much red meat consumption is linked to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes, and research has found that there aren't many benefits to eating leaner rather than fattier beef. When you're ready to cook, are you the type to just throw everything into the pan without much forethought? If you're cooking ground beef, that's generally not the best way to do things. It's important to bring your meat up to room temperature before you throw it into the pan. Why? Well, you already know how important it is to bring your pan up to the proper heat before you start cooking. If you add meat to the pan when it's still cold, it's just going to lower the temperature of the pan, which could cause issues if you're going for nice, even browning. It can also cause your ground beef to lose all those juices that make it so flavorful, leaving you with a pile of subpar cooked beef and a puddle of beef juice that you can't really use for anything. Therefore, the moral of the story is, remember to take your ground beef out of the fridge well before you start cooking for optimal results. Generally speaking, ground beef isn't served on its own. If you're making a big pan of ground beef, it's probably just a component of a larger dish. That may lead you to believe the myth that you don't have to add any seasoning to your meat until it's done cooking. But according to Taste of Home, this is a big no-no if you want your ground beef to be as flavorful as possible. That's because adding seasonings to your ground beef early on in the cooking process allows those flavors to truly meld and develop over time, which in turn will yield a much richer, more enjoyable taste. This usually means adding salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Powdered spices are not advised because they can easily burn in the pan if you're cooking on high heat. Once you take this step, you'll be blessed with well-seasoned meat that will add way more flavor to whatever dish you're cooking. It's important not to believe this myth for two reasons. The first reason comes in when you're browning meat. If you take the time to heat up your pan and oil and you wait for your meat to come to temperature before you start cooking it, it's not going to take a long time to brown your ground beef. You're looking for a nice sear and a little browning, according to Cooking Light. But if you're including your browned ground beef in another recipe, you're not going to want to cook it all the way through. If you throw that already cooked beef in the oven for an hour with all of your other ingredients, it's likely to be dry and overcooked by the time you take it out. Out. The more obvious reason you won't want to walk away from your ground beef when it's on the stove all comes down to safety. It can be unsafe to have food cooking on the stove for too long while you're in another room. Excuse me for one second. Of course. Oh, well, that was wonderful. Good time was had by all. I'm pooped. Have you fallen victim to the myth that it's safe to thaw ground beef on the counter? If you have, you're not alone. There's a belief that it won't actually cause any harm, and since it's much quicker than thawing in the fridge, it can seem like a solid option. But we're here to tell you that it's definitely not safe to defrost ground beef on the counter at room temperature. This could promote the growth of harmful bacteria that could potentially cause illness to you, your family, or your guests, which is clearly something you'll want to avoid. So how exactly are you supposed to thaw your ground beef then? Well, the fridge is certainly one option. It's easy and you don't have to think about it much, but it can take a lot of forethought and a lot of time, so it might not be ideal for everyone. If you want to thaw your beef quicker, you can always use a microwave. Our preferred method is allowing it to thaw in some cool water. When it comes to expensive cuts of meat like a nice steak, there are countless pieces of advice to ensure you're cooking your meat well so you get the best bang for your buck. But when it comes to ground beef, there is much less info. However, just because it's a cheaper cut of meat doesn't mean you shouldn't follow some basic steps to ensure it comes out as good as it can be. With ground beef, some home cooks believe the myth that you should move it around as soon as you drop it in the pan. However, Taste of Home reminds us that this actually isn't a good idea if you really want to get enough browning. In fact, they recommend that you should actually wait about five minutes after putting your ground beef in the pan before you start moving it around. That will give it some nice color to start with, making for a more flavorful base for whatever else you're making.
Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about food prep tips are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.